Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for joining in. Uh, uh, we will be starting this meeting in another five minutes. We're waiting for our other guests to join in. Uh, but we will for morning, short, morning. Uh, start within five minutes. Good morning, Ivan. Uh, keep muting yourself once you join. We will be uh, obviously meeting once we start the session. Good morning, Suraj sir. I can see you here. Good morning, good morning, Monica. Good morning, Suruchi. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining. Pleasure. Good to see you, sir. Same here, same here. Mr. Babuli, you want to say something? I can see that you've raised your hand. You can unmute yourself no, no, and speak I, up. Yeah. I join. Good morning, I join. I just post a hit. All right, sir. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.
So we'll, we'll start in the meanwhile, people are joining. You can see there are, uh, you know, uh, already people who've joined in. Uh, respecting the time, people uh, have taken out on a weekend to join us on this session today. I uh, would like to start the session. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everyone and the screen is also visible. Clear. Yes. yes. Thank you guys. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Thanks so much. So, yeah. Now, now I'll just set two rules of the uh, session first, and then we move ahead. We will every one of us, only uh, except me, uh, will keep uh, themselves on mute, uh, so that you know uh, whatever we are uh, discussing out here today, it is audible to everyone. Okay. And whenever you want to say anything, you could drop a chat or uh, raise your hand. My team in the back end would be noting the questions and passing on to me and I will be taking it up as and when we get into the session and as because there'll be many things that you will like to know which we will be covering anyway. So you've come across there are many questions which are covered in the uh, session. Let's just keep ourselves on mute uh, uh, so that I am audible to everyone. So uh, just wait. We, I will be for sure not go today without answering any of your question pertaining to the session we are taking today. Um, and we'll keep ourselves on mute because it disturbs the entire session and then, you know, uh, and then we lose our momentum. Uh, I will start with uh, welcoming you all to uh, the session where we will be discussing everything and anything about certified fraud examiner course. Uh, very, very warm welcome. Very, very good uh, morning to you. Uh, and thanks so much for taking out time on a Saturday morning to join us on this session. Uh, I'm really thankful that you've taken out time to listen to us. We will not take much of your time. We'll quickly explain you everything and uh, we will be answering everything that you would like to know this these sort of platforms are really important for us to meet each other and also to answer uh, questions which uh, which might be un unanswered or you have certain confusions about i am the uh, lead expert and uh, lead mentor for certified fraud examiner course uh, from acfe uh, i am uh, suruchi god as you can see on the uh, screen i am heading uh, the business new business and training uh, vertical for netrika consulting india netrika consulting is a licensed partner to acfe uh, in india hence i am uh, managing this piece uh, for past uh, 5 years now so we've been doing uh, CFE uh, uh, support. We've been rendering CFE support on behalf of ACFE in India for past five years. And I have been mentoring and I've been supporting and helping basically many aspirants like you to know more about ACFE and CFE. Along with me, I have one of the authorized trainer uh, for ACFE who is the authorized trainer for ACFE uh, so, uh, as in working on behalf of Netrika to uh, working with licensed partner, but he's the authorized training trainer for ACFE in India. One of it, uh, we have got three uh, trainers uh, authorized from ACFE. One of it, Mr. Surat Mukherjee has joined us today uh, who would be supporting me uh, in this session on anything that you would like to know. Thank you so much, and I welcome uh, Surat sir uh, on the session with me. Uh, um, we will also uh, uh, have an introduction from his side uh, once we get there. Uh, let's start. So we will be covering how to become CFE, why you should become CFE, and what is CFE. So we'll start from what is CFE. What exactly many of you know that, you know, you must have been recommended by a lot of your friends, colleagues that, you know, have you done CFE? Are you planning to do a CFE? What is it? And then you think that this is something, you know, very important or maybe very popular. 
but we will be touching on a bit of a technical side of it uh, uh, of CFE. Then we will see why you should become a CFE. Once you know what is it, then why, how it will it'll help you in your careers or in your day-to-day -day KRAs, basically. The, these two important questions. Then what if now I know what is CFE and uh, why I should become one? Uh, is there a roadmap? We will tell you that as well, that there is a for sure a support by ACFE uh, in your region and across the globe uh, uh, that is there, which, which can be rendered to you if you are interested once you know what is it and why you, you should be becoming a CFE. Uh, Surat sir, I would request you to take us through your introduction as well before we start the session today. Sir, I welcome you on this session. Uh, can you hear yeah. us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Suruchi. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Uh, <clears throat> I am a, a trainer, as uh, Suruchi mentioned, with, uh, you know, Netrika Consulting. And uh, our journey with Netrika is, my journey with Netrika is almost for the last three years now. And we have taken, I personally, I would have taken more than maybe 100 sessions. Professionally, I'm a chartered accountant and a cost accountant, a CFE, uh, CISA and uh, having a post qualification experience of uh, nearly 30 years now. I have uh, worked in different companies like uh, PwC, Philips India, Sony India, uh, Dalmia Bharat Group, uh, ACC Limited, and presently heading the audit for Times Group, which is Bennett and Coleman. Uh, I have had multiple roles from operating roles being controller CFO to heading audits uh, in different organizations and also SAP projects, IT projects and stuff like that. Uh, we'll be uh, very happy to answer any question uh, relating to the subjects which may come later on. And uh, we'll be even more happy to see you in some of the sessions going forward because it's a very important uh, certification uh, specifically for people who are looking into fraud forensics investigation which is a stream of job which is actually improving its visibility to a great extent because as frauds engulf us from all corners it is really really very very important and that profession is actually gathering a lot of steam so Welcome everybody and over to you, uh, Shuruchi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. So we'll be discussing all of this going forward, uh, starting with a, a brief, very brief introduction about the authorized training partner, because once you hear about ACFE and then you, uh, 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 you know, listen to us, you must know that where are we coming from? So I already mentioned that we're a licensed partner to ACFE in India. So training, uh, Netrika, Netrika uh, Consulting is a risk consulting firm. One of its vertical is training and certification, which brings in international certifications to India through a license and render many trainings. So one of it is CFE. We also are partner to CIA, also a partner to RIMS, which is a uh, risk uh, uh, as an, you know, uh, for CRMP, Certified Risk Management Professional uh, Training as well, and many other security trainings as well we are bringing out from international partners and bringing a reach to you basically so that it is available for you in India in case you want to pursue anything around this domain. So we've become the, uh, became the licensed partner to ACFE in 2019. We have uh, three authorized trainers who have more than 25 years of experience in the domains that Surat Sar mentioned and across having different exposure in different uh, aspects, which will be very helpful uh, while they also support you in your CFE journey or uh, any of the career advice if you want from them. So we have trained over 500 professionals to become a CFE in the shorter span. Then, uh, as I said, that we are a... a a risk consulting firm and uh, also a training partner for many uh, 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 international certifications. We also bring in a lot of uh, curated trainings for the corporates as well. In case any of your corporates also has any requirement, they can always uh, look forward for our support. We can help them in that as well. Since we've been into this business for the past 10 years, 
So Netrika has been into existence for uh, a decade now uh, and having uh, partnered with many other trainings. Uh, so going forward, I will talk about what is CFE. CFE sole form is Certified Fraud Examiner. As you know, it's an individual certification. Basically, you are uh, to, as in you know you are gaining this individual designation against you. As Surat sir mentioned that he's a CA, he's a CSA. He's also mentioning that he's a CFE. The CFE is a designation associated with an individual. Once you uh, uh, complete this course or pass this examination, you yourself become a CFE, which is a search. So you'll be calling yourself that I am a certified fraud examiner while you will be, uh, you know, uh, presenting yourself anywhere. So these, uh, so you become an anti fraud specialist, which is a second as in a synonym term to a certified fraud examiner. What does certified fraud examiner do? So he is actually he's mastered into four different domains, which which are the most important domains as per ACFE through the research they have done for uh, for past 35 years that what exactly a CFE should be having the kind of knowledge he should be having. So we will be uh, taking that upon that. What are the core subjects that you core subject or core knowledge or a skill set that you will be trained on or you will be basically possessing once you are deciding to become a CFE or once you become a CFE. So why? This is what exactly what we discussed. That what is it? So why you should become a CFE? Uh, uh, this is a very, very important question. I would request if Surat sir can support me into this. Why did he wanted to become a CFE after he was in his uh, career and already a CA and many, many more things that he had done? He wanted to uh, become a CFE and uh, for everyone's knowledge, uh, Surat sir also completed his uh, CFE journey in 2020. Correct, sir? Uh, so yeah. why did he uh, why did he think of it and also for his team as well? And also he thinks that, uh, you know, uh, the fraternity he's into, why they should be pursuing CFE? How will it be important for them while they're working for an organization or if they are doing their own thing? Uh, as a freelancer as well. Why do you think that it's very important to become a CFE in today's uh, world? And why why CFE, uh, ACFE says that I will also discuss uh, why it, it's it's important. So from a technical standpoint, I would request you to if you can elaborate that. I think, Monica, first of all, as an auditor uh, or an investigator, you, you do your tasks and you do uh whatever has been told to you by your organization right but then that's a one ball game and sick but the other part of the story is whether you're doing it the right way whether you're doing it as per the global best practices or not that becomes really very important when you when your investigation is put to test of law or test of time so mm. acfe what it gives you it gives you a, a global certification which is recognized globally so if you are working in consulting, if you are working in multinational corporations, your this certification puts you in good state to be part of or leading an assignment in forensics or investigation. Because this is something which everybody around the world, they understand. You need not explain to anybody when you say I'm a CFE. Secondly, the course is a global course. So it is not curated for any particular geography or country. It collates the best practices across the globe and teaches you what is right and how to respect the relevant law and then to move ahead and do an investigation which will stand the test of time and also stand the scrutiny of law. So to do a job well, it is always important for us to know what is the right way to do, what are the precautions which needs to be taken how a fraud happens, what are the psychology of the fraudster, what are the steps which we should take and then curate that with our work experience and different assignments to see going forward how we can improve on them because it's a continuous journey. So as we all know that CFE qualification doesn't end there, but you have to do continuous learning, continuous engagement because we know that fraud is a subject which is ever evolving as technology evolves people's mindset aspirations evolve the 
type of frauds, the way frauds are done, the uh, expert which the fraudster brings into the practice is far more as compared to what the investigators bring on the table. So it's a catch up game which we are playing in many sense of the term. So it is important that we need to be ahead of the curve. We need to be able to assess what are the key areas of concern, key risks. So this subject talks about how to create an anti-fraud mechanism, how to create a defense wall which will help you to navigate, which will help you to stop a fraud from happening. So one, it helps you to investigate how to do, what to do, what not to do. And on the other side, it also helps you to create a platform, create a forum, a very big collaborative forum inside your organization, which will stop doing fraud. So how you create an anti-risk, anti-fraud risk framework that also is being taught out here. So it's not one part of the story, but it is multiple facets of fraud, investigation, management of the fraudsters mindset. All of these are taken care of. So it's a it's a composite package which if one learns and continues to dwell on it, yeah. continue to learn from the future yeah. cases, then that becomes even more important. I'm good. How are you? Uh, <laughs> please, please, uh, can, you, can you please ask uh, people to go on the mute if uh, they are not speaking at the moment? I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. Yeah. yeah please go. Go ahead, sir. No, no, sir, I'm done. Over, over to you. Sorry. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, this is from the experts' uh, point of view. Also, yes, what is the important thing? Why one one should become a CIFE? One thing that I know as a mentor that this is a gold standard certificate that has been recognized globally. Actually, uh, uh, if you go in any other part of the world as well and you tell them that I am a certified fraud examiner, it is recognized very well, of course. And uh, and there are certain domains in India, for that matter, I've come across many banks, BFSI basically, and many manufacturing, uh, uh, you know, organizations as well, where there are manufacturing things that they are making it a mandate while they are hiring also people. Also, I've seen a lot of government uh, of India's uh, organizations uh, naming SFIO, ED, uh, CBI for that matter, and also the taxes, CBDT, Central Board of Taxes as well. They've also recognized uh, uh, CFE as uh, the mandate while they are performing any of these uh, duties and work responsibilities. So this, this uh, you know, this uh, uh, gives us a perspective to understand, yes, we have reached, ACFE has reached to a, that kind of a knowledge level that it is telling you that once you uh, a complete our course that is certified fraud examiner you will be in a, a position to manage fraud better and also actually uh, you know uh, uh, apply it in your day to day kras as well what is a standard that should be followed which is a very flawless standard that they have designed that should be followed uh, uh, once you are doing your day to day kras of course also, we've seen that once you become a CFE, once you're recognized uh, uh, and the organization is making a mandate, once they're hiring a CFE, they also know that uh, the CFE will be hired at a uh, you know higher cost. So you increase your earnings for sure via visit to a non-CFE. Of course, marketability, as we said, and the credibility, of course, uh, the kind of brand it has become uh, now across, it was... Uh, while yes, uh, it was not uh, then very, very popular, maybe 10 years ago uh, in India. Now, Indian organizations are also adapt adopting the practices ACFE is laying down. And they're also referring to ACFE for many things, their reports, their research papers, and a lot of things. And the content that is being taught in the course. So they're also... Uh, as in, you know, uh, declaring that one ha one can be rest assured if it's a, he's a CFE uh, to handle the uh, 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 fraud domain and the related domains, basically. So we'll move on. What exactly? What is the impact? So many organizations also reach out to us that, you know, why uh, you think you should be should be hiring certified fraud examiners or we should be encouraging our uh, existing staff uh, to pursue this course basically how what is the impact so we also we tell them that 
the kind of impact because a lot of organizations do not have proper departments in place we also tell them that you know how a, a particular department should be formed and then if the cfes are working in that how can it be an impactful uh, can for them as an organization so uh, we can see that the kind of impact which is there uh, a cfe how a cfe can reduce that impact following uh, by following the basically the protocol that has been designed following the practices that has that are being taught in the course and how a fraud should be treated basically how from that perspective and the standpoint fraud should be treated surat sir would you like to add something here since he, for me uh, you are the guru and of course uh, we can hear from the technical standpoint as well if you could add something that why an organizations now wanting to hire cfes how are they treating the fraud basically yeah monica we all know that uh, you know there is a huge amount of leakage sorry sorry suruchi uh, you know it's it's uh, okay. it's something which we need to understand that organizations are really losing a lot through fraud and in many cases these are not immediately discovered these are discovered at a time when at when an organization is at a point of no return and secondly regulators are also taking this very seriously because it's it's a matter of public money specifically for listed organizations and large organizations and government is also tightening the norms around disclosure so now if there is any fraud of more than 1 crore rupees which is done on the organization by anybody who is internal or external there has to be a reporting requirement which has to go to the regulators which has to go to the government which obviously is making life very very difficult for the organizations because once you report there are requirements to submit follow up reports closure reports the weakness in the organization the government or the regulator can then put back their own investigations on top of you so it's very important that we have our bases covered and we have a system a process which will proactively identify fraud will eliminate fraud and will take very strong action against the fraudsters and that is the only way an organization can protect itself it cannot it cannot guarantee full proof fraud yeah of course of course of course prevention measures but once it goes to the regulator and says that look this is what we have done to proactively capture proactively mm. protect proactively report proactively eradicate train people right create state of the art infrastructure then they can elevate themselves out of that as if they are also part and parcel of the fraud Absolutely. now we understand so so it's really really very important it's not a nice to have tool anymore it's a must have tool so for that organizations need professionals they need people who can manage this kind of a platform and hence the requirement of these professionals will go up shuruchi will remember how maybe 5 to 10 years back we used to talk about it professionals in the control domain and look at where we are right now right people Absolutely. are every company cannot talk about their business or about their control without technology or it right it has become a first discussion and when we look at the frauds and when we look at the risk it risk comes on top now which was meandering in the 8 to 10 category uh, in ranking about 5 years back has now straight away jumped to the first spot and it will remain there for the for a long long period of time so it is very important that when you create a platform when you create an environment which understands fraud understands what are the actions which frauds can lead to then you will have the ecosystem supporting you and actually giving you in insights and inputs mm. through the mechanism of tip of whistle blowing which as per the latest acfe survey also is the highest uh way or means through which fraud has been unearthed right close to 42% of the global frauds are identified through people speaking up people giving you tips inputs now they will only do that when they are comfortable that you have a system in place which will listen to that and which will deal with that 
if that comfort is not given to the people, then they will never ever come out and respond. And that you can give when you propagate this theory of being strict to fraud, being absolutely having a zero tolerance culture, taking consistent steps on people who are identified as doing something unethical in the company setup. And hence, you really need a system and nothing better than a CFE qualification or a protocol which can actually give you a the right way and, and for you to be recognized and you to be taken seriously in the organization. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Good, good to know this that this is yes, this is now it's a, not good to have now. This is even it, it is important to have this uh, not just for uh, having it, but yes, to control and the, uh, proactively. Basically, earlier things were very reactive. Now, now the mindset has changed to a proactive approach for that. Yeah, this is must to have. And then, yes, uh, we have already explained that, you know, how frauds are being solved and <clears throat> reported 40% faster. How can CFE also help you when you are in an organization lower down the fraud proactively once you are a CFE? So when you are not a CFE, yeah, there are things that, of course, you know as per your experience. But yes, what should be done, how proactively things should be measured and reported is what CFE tells you. So this is about yes, why why one should become a CFE and why one should hire a CFE from an organization standpoint. Of course, we also taking you through the kind of opportunities and an individual career if it's adding to you. So if you see, we've had have a handful of uh, uh, you know uh, you can see a lot of uh, uh, job postings that we. Where while we also hire for our organization, if uh, as a leader, Surat sir is also hiring for his, uh, you know, department, or we as a consulting organization hiring for our experts. We for us also the bare minimum mandate is a certified fraud examiner. So yes, if you are here in this domain, this is a must. This has become a must now, where you can see that every job posting that we could find out are they are looking forward for a minimum CFE and yes of course there are many associated other certifications which are which can be a sub domains as well for that matter anyone who's uh, uh, dealing with anti money laundering okay AML so a camps is also very good so but yes CFE has become a bare minimum if you're a CA and a CFE it's a very 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 good combination which an organization is looking forward to hire in case you are not a CF a CA but are working in fraud uh, domains or in investigation audit taxation uh, anything do with the fraud yes CFE that you can plan to do uh, and become a certified fraud examiner so uh, we also want to uh, take you through a practical uh, uh, journey as well that you know what can you expect kind of uh, uh, questions that can come, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, how are they testing your knowledge basically? So that will just give you a brief, uh, will you acquaint you with a very brief uh, sample questions that come in the course exam basically. Before that, I would like to tell you, many of you know that there are four subjects in CFE. While you want to become a CFE, you need to pass these four subjects. One is investigation, then there is law, then there are financial transactions, and then there is fraud prevention and deterrence. So these four subjects uh, is what uh, ACFE wants to test you on and wants to train you on and will check your knowledge. And these are the four exams that you have to pass to become a CFE. This, this is not a single paper course. You need to pass for examinations to become a CFE, we are going to acquaint you very quickly with the kind of questions basically, because I'm sure you must have heard uh, becoming a CFE is also uh, as in, you know, uh, in this part, uh, passing an exam is a very, very important thing. And understanding the examination of uh, which has been uh, 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 given by CFE is very important. How are they testing your knowledge? 
the uh, the question papers are globally set and these papers are little different than what you see in india so we're going to take you through that so we'll take you through the investigation prep uh, question first we're going to start a small quiz out here we're going to ask this question everyone can drop in their answer and then we're going to deliberate on this answer and see how many of you already know it uh, or are you able to understand the language that is being put out here? So over to you, Sujit, sir, if you could read the question and we'll see how people yeah. will answer the questions. Yeah. So here goes the question. Carter, this is the name of an individual. Carter, a certified fraud examiner for universal design. That means Carter, who is a certified fraud examiner working for universal design comes to know, learns that Wendy, who is a shrewd salesperson with a reputation for bending or ignoring rules, has close relationships with several universal design customers. Carter also knows that Wendy has excessive gambling habits. Now, Carter has sufficient predication to do which one of the following? Predication means reason. Yes sufficient reason to do which one of the following so there are four options now and one of them is correct one is to accuse wendy directly of having committed fraud second is alert the management that wendy might have committed fraud third is check wendy's phone computer and messages for evidence of wrongdoing and fourth conduct discreet inquiries about wendy's work as a salesperson which one of the Four is correct. I see some answering on two, some answering on four. Two is alert management that Wendy might, might have committed fraud. And four is conduct discrete inquiries about Wendy's work as a salesperson. So the house is split, Suruchi, on two and four. Nobody has gone for one or three. You are on mute, Suruchi. Let's just see. Let's just see uh, what exactly is the right answer. I had uh, I had uh, opted for three. Okay, okay, okay. So the right correct answer, answer is, four. is four. Yeah, four because see the fraud examiner should begin a fraud examination only when there are circumstances that suggest that fraud has occurred. So he will have to hold his horses till that point of time. He has to be first sure that you know, that a fraud has occurred or occurring or will occur and they should not investigate beyond the available predication. And this is true from both with respect to an internal staff who is a certified fraud examiner working for the department or a consultant who is working on a certain assignment. Because when we are working as a consultant also, we may come with a mandate, but we can get into other, uh, you know, uh, leads which can lead to larger investigation also. So, predication is the totality of circumstances that would lead a reasonable, professional, trained and prudent individual to believe that a fraud has occurred, is occurring or will occur. If fraud examiners cannot articulate a factual basis or a good reason for an investigation step, they should not do it or that means they should not proceed into a full-fledged investigation. Therefore, fraud examiner should continually re-evaluate the predication as the fraud examination proceeds, which means that moment I'm having a suspicion about somebody, about someone's activity or someone's wrongdoing, I'll have to keep him on a close watch without warning anybody, without telling the management that something is happening. Because if I tell the management that he's a fraud and it comes out to be on the other side, then it will be an embarrassment for the investigation team. So it's very important that the investigator would start watching, monitoring the transaction, monitoring the individual's way of life, pens, his way of decision making. And then when all these adds up to a reasonable quantum, then one should go ahead and then, you know, crack the egg at the right point of time. Right? Great. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move ahead on the second prep question, which is from the financial transaction subject and fraud scheme. Please, sir, over to you. So here, according to Mr. B.F. Skinner, 
the most effective way to modify a person's behavior is through which one of the following? Punishment, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, or none of the above. Punishment, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, and none of the above. So a lot of people are uh, coming with two. So two seems to be in majority. That's a good one. <laughs> Great going. Anyone who's left, please uh, drop your answer in the next one second. Okay, let's just see that what is the correct answer. Yeah, yeah great. very good. Okay. I think great to know. Ninety-eight percent have, you know, responded very correctly, which is that B. F. Skinner concluded that behavior is most effectively effectively modified by managing and modifying desires through reinforcement. That is why replacing destructive behavior with productive ones instead of trying to punish an already existing impulse. Punishment fights a losing battle in manipulating behavior because it works by providing negative consequences, administering penalties and taking away desirables. So punishment is a process by which you can temporarily suppress somebody's behavior, but you cannot change it. Having said that, is punishment absolutely not required or will we not give punishment to people who have done something. That's not the question out here. The question out here is if you want to modify somebody's way of doing things, which is the best possible? Best possible is to encourage him to do what is right. Encourage him to do what is desirable and then reward him accordingly so that his behavioral pattern slowly confirms to what we want him or how he we want him to operate. Absolutely. Yes, Angiji wanted to ask something. No. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. We'll move ahead. Yes. Third question is from fraud detection and prevention. One of the another subjects. Yes. Over hmm. to you. So, which of the following are the two main theories to control corporate criminal behavior? Which of the following? are the two main theories to control corporate criminal behavior, prevention and detection, deterrence and enforcement, assessment and resilience, or compliance and deterrence. Prevention and detection, deterrence and enforcement, assessment and reliance, or compliance and deterrence. One and three, no, <laughs> there will be only one answer all the time. So you'll have to choose the best one, even if two looks to be reasonably close, but the examination wants us to find out the best possible match. So majority best is moving towards Best possible approach, one. basically yes. best possible approach that you would choose in that situation. Yes. At times all yes. the four, four answers looks Look correct. similar, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Plus, what is most, uh, you know, important is that our own way of working, our own, uh, you know, present being the country where we are operating has a lot of influence on our answers. But when we go through the subject, when you go through the theoretical application, you understand what is the global best practice, which may be very different from Absolutely. what we are doing correctly in our country. Absolutely. Very, very important uh, point uh, that he mentioned that, you know, we are so much uh, trained uh, in our current roles that we try to look at the questions. But when we are starting the course now, please unlearn what you're doing currently because they want you to adopt global practices, correct practices that they have researched and bringing to you uh, that the course will tell you. Let's just see that which answer is correct. The answer is four is correct. Why is it correct, sir? And how many of yeah. us have answered? Yeah, so it was a very split house this time, Shuruchi. <laughs> you know, people almost okay. gave answers equally. A lot of people said one, two, you know. Uh, 
um, but but I, I I I admit it is not that easy, um, you know, to answer because they are close. So enforcement strategies include two main theories. One is compliance and deterrence, which is compliance is designed to achieve conformity to the law without having to detect process or penalize violators. Compliance systems provide economic incentives for voluntary compliance to the laws and use administrative effort to control violations before they occur. As a strategy to control crime, deterrence is designed to detect law violations, determine who is responsible and penalize offenders to or in order to deter future violations. Deterrence systems try to control the immediate behavior of the individuals, not the long term target by compliance system. So it is important that we have to deter the people who are violating and encourage and reward people who are complying. Going ahead to the last part of the question today from the law section. Yes. So in the context of a employee interview or engagement or employee interaction, all the following actions could result in liability for false imprisonment, except which one? So this is a negative question. Locking the door of our, in the interview room, standing in front of an exit to an interview room, telling the interviewee that they may not leave the room, or telling the interviewee that they are required to answer questions. Which of the following will not lead to a liability for false imprisonment? Locking the door of to an interview, standing in front of an exit, telling the interviewee that he or she may not leave the room, or telling the interviewee that they are required to answer all questions. All the people who have done interviews in different circumstances, in different locations, must have done any or many of these. Right, so a lot of answers on four. Let's see what's the correct answer. Yeah, yeah right correct, answer correct. is four. Yeah, so what is false imprisonment? False imprisonment is the unlawful restraint by one person of the physical liberty of another without the consent or legal justification. So it's not applicable to law enforcement agencies or police who have a warrant to arrest you or keep you in confinement or a court order is there. But if it's a private investigation or an official investigation, then this is applicable. A claim of false imprisonment might arise if an employee is detained in any way during a search or interview. Some factors used to determine if an individual has been falsely imprisoned, including locking the door of the interview room, blocking the exit of the interview room, requiring the employee's presence or continued presence in any with by any amount of force or using a physical barrier to restrain the employee. We'll have to understand that in most of the cases when we are doing an investigation, it is completely lopsided against the individual. So you can call him in the office, restrain him for very long hours, don't allow him to go back home, put a bouncer outside the room who is physically much stronger than that individual, you know, forcing him to sit or even not take a you know toilet break. All these things are intimidating and not permissible as per law unless and until you are authorized to do such behavior. So we have to be very careful because otherwise the law can turn turtle against us. So while investigating, we have to be very careful that we are polite, courteous within the rules of the private investigation when we are doing investigation in our corporate boardrooms or in our corporate conference rooms, what may or may not lead to a false imprisonment. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was just a quick uh, reveal of the kind of questions where the concepts will have. Uh, before we, we uh, move to 
that you know how to become cfe i'll take two questions very very quickly that i could see on the chat which are very important that we must answer them right away uh, uh most most of you heard actually acfe cfe and all and got confused that these are two board things no not at all the certified fraud examiner is a professional designation and a course by acfe acfe is association of certified fraud examiners it's a professional organization of fraud examiners examiners based out of us as i said having more than 35 years of existence they started in 1988 uh, in austin texas and they have uh, been training uh, uh, and producing fraud information and tools on how to how do we globally prevent fraud and this is a professional certification that they uh, uh, produce which is now a very popular certification acfe is looked upon by many uh, professionals organization for, for referring to how one should prevent the fraud so basically this is an association and the designation which is a course certified fraud examiner is their course which we as a partner they hire different partners in uh, different parts of the world netrika is their india partner which uh, allowing them allowing netrika to basically support anyone in india who or globally as well wants to become a cfe through our support this is one secondly uh, one uh, gentleman is asking if this course is all about theory not at all this is not a theoretical course that you will uh, you know read a lot of stuff and under you know and then answer no not at all this is something which you need to really understand if you're not understanding you will not be able to understand the question as well surat sir i would like you to uh, maybe you know add something on this that this is not a theoretical course at all which people might think yeah so uh, so what is important out here is that the great part of this course which i have always acknowledged is that this course doesn't require you to mug up any portion of the course you know even if it is subject like law which always we feel that you know you have to memorize sections you have to memorize case studies case laws no it is a complete concept driven curriculum you have to read the content and absorb the con the concept so that if the question is twisted turn from any angle you and you have multiple choice questions available in front of you using your concepts sometimes one or sometimes multiple of them together you will be able to find out the right answer because the answer is already available in front of you so what is very important and where the classroom really helps is to clarify and get that concepts cleared sometimes by reading the course or by reading the content you get a certain different understanding of the of the outcome so what is important is when people ask questions when the questions are answered for different participants the cobwebs come out and the concepts gets thoroughly cleared that is what is the objective of this course so that the professional is able to navigate himself or herself in a situation based on the concepts by memorizing That's law it will not help because when you work in a particular domain yes you will have to understand law so if you are investigating a case in mexico or thailand or india or uk you will have to understand the law which is relevant so that is a very pointed understanding of law which you need wherever you are going to work or wherever you are going to investigate but the concepts which is there would be very similar across the globe so they have taken global concepts global theories which have been researched and we have which has been surveyed across decades and then they have made this course and they make a continuous modification to the course every single year absolutely absolutely point to be noted it's not point a static thing there. yeah it's not a static thing so they keep on changing and i think the change may now start happening even more frequently as compared to what it was earlier maybe the cycle may even go down because acfe wants their graduates to be quite updated that's why they encourage a continuous learning program 
If you are yeah, online yeah. with their website, you will always get the latest update, the latest seminar, conferences, global conferences, online, offline, content material, all of that one will need to get, one will need to read through to be updated about it. Because in this profession, what is important is we have to be updated about what's Absolutely. happening around us. Absolutely. So once you are becoming a CFA, it's not that you pass the exam and then you are uh, looking forward just to your careers or you're helping your organization. This is an involving uh, learning also because you become an elite part of the ACFE group as ACFE network. ACF, you become a professional which who's a, a member of ACFE who will get the learning as it evolves actually. So they keep updating you with the current. Once you let's suppose Surat Sir became twenty uh, CFE in 2020, but he's he's a part of ACFE professional network and he's getting upgraded through them as a part of the uh, you know fraternity and the network basically. So that's also very very important thing to note that they keep updating things and you become a part of the entire basically uh, large associations where who, which is globally managed and functioned basically. So you get to learn in different webinars or seminars or conferences or through many, uh, you know, uh, information that they put across the research papers and everything, which is globally researched and sent out to you, which is also helping you to stay updated and upgraded basically. OK, so this is about it. We very, very quickly go into why Netrika or what is exactly the roadmap to become a CFE. I can see a lot of questions here. How can one become a, a, a CFE in 30 days? And what is the uh, you know importance of the membership? Uh, uh, so we will take that. I can see one question by Mr. Manas. Can you explain how do CFE? Uh, no, not this one. I think uh, somebody asked about uh, Sangeet, sir. Is CFE relevant to prevent losses due to frauds in 3PL industry, sir? Can we take this up and then we'll... Uh, all other questions are related to the slides that's going to be coming up uh, and I'm going to cover that quickly. Uh, if you could... What is the question, this, Suruji? Is CFE relevant to prevent losses due to frauds in 3PL industry? Sangeet, uh, Mr. Sangeet has asked this question. Uh, Mr. So, Sangeet Sharma. So uh, when you say 3PL industries, what exactly you mean, Sangeet ji? You can unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, Surat, I am Sangeet. I was head of uh, TV supply chain solutions for seven years, head of security and loss prevention. Hmm. And I handled about 40 odd investigations in which there were frauds, there were thefts, all kind of things. Now I am uh, running my own consultancy which deals with security and loss prevention as one of the products. Yeah, so yeah. This, this this entire course, this concept looks ex exciting to me and I think it will gain, uh, I'll gain some knowledge if I register with CFE. Absolutely, CFE. absolutely. But what I want to know is that, uh, see, basically there are two things. One is that, uh, uh, and I'm being very uh, clear, uh, all the figures which you have shown uh, have shown losses, the median losses in dollars. Uh, whereas... Mm -hmm. uh, India is still a third world country. Our, our, our uh, problems are third world problems. People steal stuff which is just, which has got a value, market value of 15 rupees or 20 rupees, but that also is a loss. Yeah. So in, in warehouses, what happens is that people pick up stuff, it pilferage happens, theft happens, and fraud happens. The fraud is the yeah. biggest problem. Where yeah. the material is shipped out of the warehouse without proper uh, papers without proper invoices, chalans, and later on uh, when it is discovered that there is the shortage of material in the warehouse, then everybody runs a helter skelter to find out what happens. So yeah. I have handled multiple such cases, three dozen plus cases, that is okay. And this course will definitely add to uh, my own knowledge base. But is any part of this course covers specifically losses happening due to frauds in warehousing, where inventory uh, shortages, inventory shrinkages can be taken care of. Yes, so see, it is not totally focused on it, but there are elements like loss prevention. There are elements like what you mentioned, you know, swifting materials without invoicing, be it in the, uh, in the uh, big store format, 
uh, how to manage cash counters. So, so whatever. So loss or fraud happens because when you're not following a process or you have not set up a process or there is no proper monitoring of the process. Because at the end of the day, we all understand that whatever you create, whatever format, whatever template you create, at the end of the day, there is people on the other side of the table. And when people collaborate, when people get their dark side of their talent, then they can defraud you at all cost. Sometimes they become even desperate. So what, as an organization, what you need to do is what kind of systems and processes you have put, what kind of segregation of duties you have put, what kind of maker checker control you have put, what kind of exception report rule you have put so that if somebody does anything exceptional, whether it comes out, whether your data is able to throw out an exception. For example, if there is a warehouse which bills five lakh every single hour or five lakh every single day on one particular day, if it is down to two lakh, are you investigating that or not? Right. I know warehouses where there are CCTV surveillance on the shipment point so that they understand how many boxes are coming in, how many are getting loaded and how many vehicles are moving out and that they compare along with the invoicing to see whether there is parity or not. If 50 trucks have left, invoicing should be to the tune of 50 crore. And if invoicing is 40 crore and 50 trucks have left to the CCTV camera footage, then they immediately stop operation there and check what is those 10 trucks which moved out with material and where is their invoicing. Right. So there are, but but the problem is Sangeetji becoming, being a veteran professional, you will know that all these entails cost. All these entails investment. So the question is how much you are going to lose and what is the investment to stop this from happening? So if the loss is as low as say whatever you mentioned, 15, 20 or 100 rupees, the question is whether you will invest a few lakhs to stop that or you will live with that particular problem. And when that snake will become bigger to completely swallow you? That becomes the question because fraud, as we understand, is a habit. So every fraudster does the first few targets very small. They just want to check whether are you checking or not. So the first few frauds are small in nature. They want to pass it off as an error. But once you don't change their behavior, if you don't do management of those people by terminating them or transferring them or telling them that whatever you are doing, we are noticing it and we are asking you for explanations, then that will stop. So as a fraud star, as you will see in some of this theory that the fraud star, they don't do anything as a random activity. They would always look at the environment in which they operate and then they will strike big. Right. Yeah, so so they plan you your... I think you have, you have already answered uh, what I wanted to know. So this makes a lot of sense. And thanks a lot. I'm looking forward for the CFA certification. Thank you. Very much. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. Can I quickly? Can you... Yeah. Yeah. Can please. I? I'm sorry for interrupting uh, Suruchi uh, and uh, uh, Surat. Uh, very good afternoon. I'm Nalni Rajesh here from uh, uh, Chennai. Uh, so uh, maybe you you might be also a bit surprised to know that I'm uh, I'm an out and out uh, person with the hardcore HR background, uh, you know, including yeah. all the core HR areas, and I've also had uh, extensive experience in hiring people. In, in interestingly, I've hired people with the, the CFE uh, qualifications for the internal audit team. Uh, uh, I've been part of uh, organizations that are very uh, that have robust systems for uh, on ethics and uh, you know the integrity ethics policies on uh, fraud prevention and etc. And uh, so we have senior people whom I have hired, uh, interviewed and hired for being part of this inter such internal audit teams. That is how I took a liking. I was fascinated with one of the candidates who had this qualification. Uh, I was very fascinated by that and that's how I took an interest to find out more about this and I was uh, curious to do the certification myself. So how okay. uh, uh, the, is there any restrictions for a HR professional uh, to take up I will, I will, I will. 
Ma'am, please, I will just take that up. We'll just, we're very, very having time constraints. So quickly take you through uh, what exactly is the minimum thing that is required. And then I can also personally touch base with you and understand more about this. So uh, uh, we will park the other questions in the meantime and we'll come back to that. Uh, first, it's very important to understand why, uh, you know, what exactly, how it is the roadmap to become a CFE. So one first thing first is that check your eligibility. Eligibility is very important. I'll take that up in the next slide that how can you check your eligibility, which will answer your question, Miss uh, Nalini. Then, uh, then, there are two options. Uh, if one, you want to go through a self preparation that you become a CFE uh, member first and then buy a, a, a study material directly from them, have an examination, uh, uh, you know, keys from them, and then you self start yourself and learning from any means that you can gather and then start preparing and then giving a certificate as an, an exam and passing it. This is self learning. Or you want to go with the second option with ACFE also suggests that, you know, we are giving you a facility of a licensed partner who's well versed of the process, who will quickly help you, support you to become a CFE. In that matter, yes, Netrika comes in picture where we will be supporting you, helping you through our live interactive classes with a lot of different support, which a roadmap that we have um, made that what exactly has worked for many professionals who have passed through us which will also work for you and then you pass the uh, cfe course uh, with a flying colors through netrika uh, in 30 days basically why we say 30 days this is a four week program actually which will be taking you through the program into four different weeks of four different subjects. So ACFE membership is first and foremost, even if you want to do a self prep or anything, you have to become an ACFE member. This is the first thing that you, they go to generate your membership number. Then the eligibility point system uh, that you must have 50 points to even get eligible for the examination. So there are two parts. Uh, uh, to become a CFE. One is passing an examination. Second is getting your application approved. The application is a, is a very extensive application where you're declaring a lot of, you know, the, uh, everything about your experience, about what exactly your your handling, your KRA, you're declaring many things, which is becoming a part of the application, which goes to ACFE for approval. So they approve it, you be, do an exam, uh, the approval comes in, you become a CFE. If the application doesn't get approved, even if you give the exam, you cannot become a CFE, they will reject your application. So our team specifically supports you very closely with no failures that, you know, yes, sure, sure, the application would be approved. What are these two years of experience that is, uh, you know, that's important uh, for you to have? So basically 40 points you get from your uh you know your graduation your education but those 10 points are very very important which uh, comes with you know if you have at least two years at uh, years of experience in the domains they wanted the large domains are accounting auditing criminology sociology fraud investigation laws prevention law taxation uh, many security professionals if they are handling fraud uh, as in prevention or investigation as uh, you know, uh, some of the participant also said that he's managing that. So yes, he will be approved. This, these are uh, basically how to qualify. These are few the few of the uh, you know courses. Uh, sorry, uh, the domains that are there, which will help you uh, uh, if you have the related experience. Then only you can uh, get uh, approved in your CFE application. So this is what it is. Give me one minute. Yes. So uh, then passing for uh, passing an exam is the later part. Once you have the approved application, then passing exam. Everything is in passing the exam as well. Where, how do I pass the exam? What do I read? How do I read? What exactly will help me to pass the exam in the first go? There, Netrika supports comes in the picture, the kind of uh, study material that are curated for this program, which has been uh, given by ACFE, the uh, curated material helps you. The um, basically uh, the portal helps you, which gives you the practice question papers, 
we also tell you how to practice them what is the frequency to practice all of that is being taken care by netraka we hand hold you so that you pass your exam in the first stage with the right kind of knowledge understanding through these four classes which are done on every weekend sunday is a class where we take uh, back to back sessions every month there is a new session starting up you could start that as well and you can uh start your journey with cfe to become a cfe in 30 days so these are the three trainers that are india trainers which are authorized trainers they can they are available on linkedin you can also connect with them for your career advices and how cfe should be beneficial in case your uh, answers are not uh, uh, you know questions are not answered here you could also connect with them on linkedin they are the uh, india trainers certified trainers from acfe they have the most updated information you can touch base with them then these are the four subjects that we discussed about investigation fraud prevention law fraud uh, financial transactions these four subjects are uh, independent to each other so we will be taking these subjects uh, separately so once you let's suppose very very uh, common question if i pass investigation uh, uh, if i fail in any of the other do i have to restart my journey no you if you pass any of the uh, uh, subject out here it is passed you have to fo focus on the rest three and all these four in different exams has to be passed to become a cfe even if the one is left with your two multiple or three multiple attempts also if you are not able to pass that particular subject we will help you out only on that subject so that you pass that first first thing is that you know uh, the program is designed in such a way that we will not have you attend the examination if you are not sure that for now you will pass so we take you through a very extensive program with a lot of support and a lot of motivation and the right things in place so that you pass in the right timeline that you have decided for yourself so examination format that uh, is there for exams four subjects then examination process procedure you can take up this examination at your home with a live proctored uh, which is through prometric platform or you have prometric centers in mostly all the metro cent, uh, cities you could also go to the prometric center and attempt a examination uh, which is a tension free because you don't have to manage your network manage your uh, you know uh, basically environment uh, you can also choose to go to prometric center and give an examination it's an examination which is of 2 hours 100 questions 75 question has to be correct mcq based questions the very very tricky questions we also tell you that how to read these questions so that uh, these four answers if they are looking similar to you how will you pick that right answer which will match your questions uh, sample prep question might look little easier but the real examinations are little twisted that is the the course is all about we tell you how to read that question how are you uh, basically um, applying that concept into a story building that they make while they ask you any question that's very important uh, we will also hear from some of the alumni that have done course from us that how did they clear their head while doing an attempt for an examination after going through this rigorous training program okay so 60 days to complete the exams once you start the course you have got 2 months if you appeared for one exam if you not appeared for any of the exam you still have a one year timeline in case of the any uh, uh, you know um, you get any emergency exigencies in place you could also halt it but we say that you know you must do your examination if you've started this course if you started this journey because uh, it's going to be wasted anyway so uh, my uh, counselors will also call you after this and tell you more uh, in details why live uh, uh, training program a lot of people say that i can self prep i can you know read the questions and read the materials and then uh, appear for an examination why should i go through a training program a training program one is one thing is very uh, clear that you know uh, when there is a force behind you you are bound to take something or, or you are in your head at least clear that i have started this up i will complete this since i have invested myself 
with the time and the money but when you think that i've now bought the examination keys i will start sometime a self motivation is really difficult to find out when we are working professionals to because we are either motivated to do our jobs or something for our per personal uh, career upliftment so it is i've seen a lot of people sitting on the course for 6 6 months one one year and not able to do it when they decided they must complete that thing since they have decided uh, with a mindfulness that i will be uh, having certain advantages or gaining something additional so they must complete this is where you should be uh, resorting to the course which is called acfe review course which is the, given by netrika helped and supported by netrika which is a course done through a training program basically not only a training program a well research process which will help you to become a cfe with a lot of support in the right timelines and with the flying colors not wasting much of your time okay so this is about why the training program actually so uh, we have a success rate of 97% people who would like to attempt the exam i've seen people taking the course doing the training then leaving the journey as well we are just after them but yes it has to come from within as well that once i've started something my team will not leave any stone unturned till the time we make you we we will give you support and make you a cfe but yes of course if there are certain person exigencies we can't also help but we are with you throughout as in as long as the course is valid by cfe for you this is what we give you in the course program we give you a 370 page review course book which is not which doesn't come with a self prep which is a very very important book while you're preparing to become a cfe in the shortest time possible administrative guidance that we're going to give you on the application process then in class discussion the kind of personal discussion that will happen which will help you develop your understanding better then online uh, community of course this is there with all the important thing is the training program basically these four days that you're going to spend with us and these the entire one month that you're going to spend with us where you will be added to a uh, uh, network of people who will be together doing the journey uh, okay and uh, striving to become a cfe which will also help you to stay in the game and learn from, with each other uh, you know uh together and through the trainers in a very recognized way basically which will be helping you to uh uh carve out this journey in a little smoother way and a little or as in you know process uh, uh driven way rather than you know where to start how to do i've read this much let me if I, you would not even know that if i am prepared or not if you're doing a self journey my team supports you to tell you that you look very prepared as of now to us please go ahead and give the exam because uh, i've seen that a lot of people start and don't complete so these are success stories you can also check on our linkedin uh, pages or social media pages we posting success story of first attempt uh, uh, people passing it within uh, you know the stipulated time they decided on uh, and uh, uh, becoming a cfe and moving on in, into their second step of their careers so you can also check there and we have just posted out something out here we will quickly quickly listen to uh, two of the alumni we have today which are your industry colleagues which will give you a little brief perspective of when they started uh, to think that they should become a cfe Uh, why did they resort to netrika and why did they basically uh, you know uh, think that he, they should they should start here yeah i will uh, request uh, uh, ms reshma to come uh, uh, you know here and please please take us through uh, this uh, you know your journey basically your experience ranpreet nalini sangeet i'm going to just come in 5 minutes and answer your questions Hi everyone thank you for having me here uh, actually uh, to be uh, very short on that uh, currently i'm working with axis bank uh, as a senior manager under frm department and uh, regarding this course i want to come directly to that course which i did uh, from uh, netrika so basically when i uh, you know decided to do cfe from uh, for one 
whole year i was just struggling to you know get into that 2000 page book and i actually thought that i would be able to do it on my own but uh, my knowledge my understanding was uh, you know i was just breaking things in between because obviously we are working professional we have our work we have home to manage so when i contacted netrika so they you know they just uh, gave me such uh, you know valuable information and the path that how will i get into cfp and also they guided me at every step from uh, you know filling up the form or uh, every every detailing they uh, step by step told me about the same and uh, the journey was amazing i i completed cfp in a one month that was a dream come true for me and uh, so doing cfp is not only uh, you know uh, effort from netrika but your effort is equally required when it comes to attending class understand the concept because the faculty is awesome they clear your doubts even after uh, the class is over and uh, they will handle your queries they will assist you they will give you notes to prepare uh, as easy as possible and uh, this journey i would say was amazing with netrika and uh, i did it uh, in one month uh, was actually i will tell a dream come true for me so uh, now only uh, clearing exam is not the purpose someone asked uh, the question that whether this is just a theory paper or not so i want to answer that so you un- you understand the theory as a concept but when you go for examination there would be a practical life scenarios they will give you which the concepts you understood you have to apply that concept and answer that question so it's not about what you read in book will exactly come in the paper that will be very tricky you if the your concept is clear obviously the teachers the faculty are really very nice to make you understand that once you understood the concept you will be able to answer the questions which are more scenario based some exams 50% you will get questions which are scenarios they will give you scenarios to apply that concept and answer the question so in that way faculty helped me a lot to understand the concept and i was then you know keen to uh, do cfe more uh, interestingly i was uh, keen to attend the 9 to 5 session when i heard that the session would be like 9 to 5 on sunday that was a little uh, you know i got confused how will i handle but it was very interesting when you interact with people in that session they are working professionals so much of experience they share the experience and that's an amazing journey someone is asking how useful cfe is in my current job so exactly now i am not into investigation part i am more into analytics part of the fraud trend which happens but i am actually uh, you know uh, considering the fraud how it is going uh, uh, currently in nowadays you should know all the frauds which are coming into that you find very interesting to you know when you study the case that how the frauds are happening how fraudster are doing things so that was uh, that actually when you once you clear your cfe you will be more keen yourself to read articles about how frauds are going on and how the industry is handling it great so great. that's thank about you. me <laughs> thank you reshma thanks for such such thank you thank you so much Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank so you, much. entire faculty uh, who uh, you know uh, gave us so much of uh, uh, knowledge, and they keep on updating us in uh, group and give uh, more you know recent articles. That is something which I like. When I like once I'm joined to Netrika, it's not the course is over and you are disconnected with the team. They, we are still here. We uh, exchange information, articles, whatever, nothing you know, whatever coming new in industry. So thank you so much, Netrika, for uh, having us with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll thank you. move over to uh, Amit. Amit, hi, Amit. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? And uh, please over to you. Yeah, please, Amit. Can you hear us? Amit, can you hear us? He's on mute or something. No issues. Uh, we'll move forward uh, to this session. Uh, 
you know what exactly what is the course fee this is a course fee uh, of this exam review course which is 180000 but this can be paid in uh, you know uh, different uh, flexibilities as well there are different discounts available it covers it's an end to end program which has one year membership your examination fees your mock tests your all the materials that are required everything is there it's a full fledged course but it's going to be basically a uh, uh, a full course but it is is this at this cost which which uh, you know is associated with many discounts and also uh, payment flexibilities as well that my team is going to be uh, letting you know you can drop a chat here that we would like to know more and then my team will come back to you if you would like to know more about this so we have uh, batches across uh, the year so upcoming is the 3rd march batch which is going to start next month we already running a batch which started on the 4th of february which will run uh, till 3rd and then we're going to start the next batch and loop it it's a loop batch basically if you've missed the 4th february start on 11th feb you can uh, complete your journey on the 3rd march as well so all of these batches are there which going to be there for at your uh, dispersal we have corporate discount referral discount student scholarships as well Uh, industry specific discounts basically uh, not industry specific armed force people who are coming from the armed forces are uh, looking at uh, uh, you know a transition we have special discounts for uh, them uh, my team will be uh, uh, in touch with you if you would like to know more about it quickly quickly we'll take 5 uh, minutes to uh, wind this up and take the questions sir please i'm so sorry for being late on this session uh i could see miss uh, shweta had to leave also deem you can leave shweta's number with me i'm going to personally call her after the session and uh, you know answer her queries so what is the cost we just uh, of the just the exam just the exam cost is 400 dollar you can take the examination keys if you are self preparing you can go ahead and do the examination you must take the membership also uh, 400 dollar is your examination keys 100 dollar is your membership and um, then uh, application and everything you have to manage at your side okay share the contact information these are two people who you can contact my team will also contact uh, with you people who are already touch with you we'll show, yeah this is a slide of the uh, cost breakup cost breakup is in front of you this is designed by acfe 2200 uh, us dollars which is uh, converted into inr and shown to you for your ready reference uh, then uh, uh, somebody was asking do exam happen every month yeah if you can you your let's suppose you your uh, my team tells you you're totally prepared for exam you can uh, go to the prometric calendar and book your exam and the calendar will tell you the availability and go to be uh, you can book the exam and for how long someone has to pay every year yes as long as you want to retain the cfe certification you need to renew your membership it's about 70 to 85 dollar depending upon the role and industry you are into they have also made different uh, things how do i apply for an exam i've already registered on acfe so you were registered for a prep course or something that we don't know so yukti uh, my team will call you okay you uh, somebody please call miss yukti singh and explain them uh that how do they apply for exam if they have already registered on acfe if you are a registered member then you have to have the obviously exam keys but how will you pass the exam you will have to buy the study material these are two three different course uh, uh, options available that my team will tell you fee structure and break up is there on the slide do exam happen this is what i've answered how that is uh, data says operation general bank what is this banking people have exposure of aml kyc yes 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 it makes them eligible this is a one part of the uh, eligibility listed criteria what is the duration 60 days duration is when it is fixed that when you start your exam first exam within those 60 days you have to complete your rest three exams also what is the difference between cia and cfe cia is a certified internal auditor program we have both the partnership my team will call you and explain you the difference and how it will help you what exactly we understand we have to understand your role right now what exactly the role you are into then only we'll be able to assess that what is what is the applicability of both 
the different certification whether people with operations banking psus are available eligible uh, uh, we need to understand the role you are performing in that operation sir we can't tell you uh, by just checking that you're working in a certain psu bank if it's making you eligible or not we need to know if you have uh, uh, correct and the right amount of kras okay i think i have taken up most of the questions okay anything else yes i had registered for prep course 2022 expire yeah, it gets expired because since they keep upgrading their course material you need to get in touch we can maybe get your course reactivated also we will see into that okay sorry uh, we will call you uh, okay acf exam fee is compulsory yes without examination you you will not be able to do the uh, prepare for the exam if taken most of the questions out here this is the number of my uh, team members who can re you can reach out to them and we've also noted down few questions which are not answered over here we will take them up personally with you today or maybe whenever it's convenient for you i hope we have been able to Ma, uh, Mausam, we will, we will, we will call you. We'll call you. We, uh, I hope we have been able to answer all your queries and been able to uh, be uh, attentive over here. I'm, I apologize if any of you could not find your answers. We will for sure contact every, each one of you separately. Smita, you can drop in your contact details. My team will call you. I thank. Everyone, including uh, Surat sir, for uh, joining me today over here and supporting me out through this session. And thanks, everyone. Thank Have you. a lovely, lovely weekend ahead. And we will be also sharing this presentation right after the session with you. Okay. Anything, and we will Thank also you. add uh, more information about ACFE also in this slide and send across to you. Thank you for being so kind and so warm today. Uh, I had a lovely time. I hope you guys also had uh, the, the feeling was mutual. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you. Uh, I'm also leaving my number over here in case anyone wants to connect with me directly. And if in case you want to connect with the trainer, they are available on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. care, Bye. everyone. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Very much. Most welcome. Most welcome.